from an underprivileged background. I come from a polygamous family. For context, my father has many wives and I have many brothers and sisters. In the context of my culture and community, the true mark of a man is one who produces many male children. In my father's case, the first wife produced two girls. The second wife produced three girls. The third wife produced four girls. My mom produced two girls, and so on, and so on, and so on. My dad had no intentions of stopping until he got that bloodline the right place. The trouble with polygamy in the context of Africa is that it is meant to show that a man is a man, but it forgets to cater for all the other children that are born into that environment. My mother did not have much of an education herself, but she did yearn for something better for me and my sister. So she made the decision to leave the village and travel to the city to find work as a housemaid. They were called domestic servants back in the day. It was a very unglamorous job, which comprised of cleaning up after people, but at least it gave her the chance to put her children to school. Of course, on the salary that she earned, that was a bit unrealistic, but at least she made that first step. I was young and inquisitive. I had big dreams about what I wanted to do when I grew up. I wanted to go to school. But that dream, in the clear, cold light of day, was never going to be a reality. I simply did not have the access to education. On a domestic worker's salary, it was hard enough to cater for everyday needs. The idea of sending two children to school was quite far-fetched. In a twist of fate, my mom's employee would often see me and my sister playing in the garden. And one day, she made a bold decision and said she was going to put us in school. And not just any school. She put us in an A school, the same school that her own children went to. Because of that one single act of generosity, me, Stella, a girl from rural Harare, Zimbabwe, is standing in front of a great audience in the United Kingdom to share my career trajectory. I have enjoyed an adventurous career in both public and private sectors. I have worked in education. I have worked with an award-winning Formula One team. I have worked in banking and in finance. And today, I'm speaking with you. All of my successes can be traced back to access to education. The sad reality is my story is a one-off. There are still millions of children, millions of girls across the world who do not enjoy the same access or privileges that I have. And it is important to bring this to the fore so we can start having conversations to make the change that is required. That is an insert of me and two of my moms. How many of you get to say that, right? <laughs> this statistic is from UNESCO, which states that 9 million girls between the ages of 6 and 11 will not get the chance to go to school just because of the gender that they were born in. Each time I go back to Zimbabwe, I try to retrace my steps. This picture, I took it from the market. It's a picture of a young girl who sells vegetables in order to supplement her family's income. The reason why I took that specific picture is because this is my lived experience. I was that girl before selling vegetables at the market in order to supplement my mom's salary. It is important for us to speak about these stories because many of us in this room have read about an article in the news, have read about something on the internet, 
but I have lived through it. And I can tell you that my story is the story of so many girls who share the same dreams and desires of an access to education. That young girl in the photo, her name is Tatenda. She told me that she wanted to become a nurse when she grows up. The reality is that will remain a dream until we absolutely flatten the gap between the right to education and the access to it. So what does this mean for us? This means that in our communities, on our panels, in our boardrooms, we need to start to get these conversations going. We need to realistically look at ourselves and see what we can do in order to change the trajectory of these people's lives. We need to think to ourselves, what can we do to move the dreams from dreams to reality? Every girl deserves to have a chance. As I leave this stage today, I leave carrying the dreams of girls across Africa, girls in Sudan, girls in Bangladesh, girls in Afghanistan. One of the things that we are afraid of talking about is the economic drivers that are keeping girls out of school. I mentioned the issue of polygamy, which is part of my family. And what you will find is that there is no push, there is no incentive to send girls to school. The reality is that boys have better chance of going to school because they will further the family's bloodline. I know this from personal experience in my own family. The reality is a girl will get married, have children that will extend another family's bloodline, which is of no benefit to her family. Therefore, there isn't any real incentive to send her to school. What then happens is she gets into an early childhood marriage. When she gets into an early childhood marriage, there is absolutely no future, no prospect of a further education. If, like me, your mom was a housemaid and you were a girl, it was very likely that you would follow the same career. So there was no positive trajectory of your life. As I said, my story is an anomaly. My sister, who I mentioned, today is an auditor in an international bank. My other sister had two children by the age of 14. The outrage that you are feeling right now is important. We must be outraged, but it can't be outrage alone. The conversations need to continue. The changing of societal attitudes needs to continue. We need to make not just progress, but a complete change of travel. This is important to me. I hope it is important to you. You have been an amazing audience. Thank you.